Well, we're all sitting here relaxing. Oh, big stretch. Because the injector lines are on. So, it's a real rat's nest. Kind of a pain. So here's a helpful hint if you've uh, not kept track of which lines go where. Um, the injector pump, as seen from the front, rotates counterclockwise. Which means that... Uh, your firing sequence would be going from here down in that direction. Now, on my unit, for where the positions are, it's 8, 7, 2, 6, and then we go underneath for 5, then 4 is also underneath, and we come back up here underneath to 3, and then uh, 1, this is one, and then back to eight again. I marked them all on here uh, just so that I, uh, I knew where they were going, but uh, I didn't actually know in the beginning, and what I had to do was, I actually went with number uh, six, I believe it was. I found my number six line, which these lines happily have a little serial number on them that you can see, and the final digit of the serial number is actually the, uh, um, the uh, cylinder number. And I found that one, noted where it fit best, and it was probably a pretty good choice because there was no way it fit in this position, and there was no way it fit underneath. And from there, I could, you know, figure out, okay, uh, that I knew was six. And then from there, I grabbed number two, and uh, it was really obvious where number two went as well. And from there, I could determine what the uh, direction of rotation was and where all the subsequent positions should be because... Uh, I took the firing order off of an intake for this engine and uh, and worked accordingly around. So, there we go. Now i got to work out how to put the wiring harness underneath here because you can't put the wiring harness on. With the uh, intake on, there was too much interference from some of the components at the back of the engine, the filter and all that matter of stuff. Hopefully it's going to get around this uh, nest of wires, but I don't think there are any of the connectors that were particularly large. So, there we go. On to the next step. Okay, so the uh, various bits of the wiring harness uh, are all uh, hooked up, you know, apart from a few uh, sensors that... Uh, aren't uh, on here yet like the water temp sensor and the air cleaner uh, temperature sensor and uh, so I really I guess I can uh, put the uh, intake on and that leads me to the next step which is to clean up the uh, air intake which has been sitting in my parts washer for a while hopefully Varsol is not uh, corrosive to aluminum but I guess I'm gonna find out when I fish that thing out either that or uh, I put this uh, intake on which is from a turbo it's actually uh, new old stock uh, but it means that I would give up my EGR and uh, and all that but honestly it looks to me like I like the look of it better be a hell of a lot easier to plumb in an air filter you know something like a K&N or something like that Okay, so here's the state of the engine for tonight. I've got the starter on. I've put the uh, the front thermostat uh, housing on. Uh, and it's all torqued down and sealed. Obviously, I already said I had the uh, fuel injector lines on. I've connected up pretty much all of the uh, front wiring harness, with the exception of bits and pieces that, you know, obviously I don't have uh, on yet. Uh, next step, I guess, is to deal with the intake manifold, as I've already said, and I'm going to have to go and uh, see this uh, uh, high output uh, dual thermostat here uh, and the water pump as well. Uh, came with a bypass hose here, but uh, it's like about an inch too short, which I'm a little bit annoyed about, but uh, should be too big a deal to get another one from uh, NAP tomorrow. Uh, just a quick point, uh, you can see right there on the water pump, that's how you can tell if you have a high output water pump, is it's got HO cast into the housing. So there you go, a little bit of education for tonight, you know, worth nothing to anybody who cares. 
Okay, so uh, we finished looking at the motor. One thing that's uh, a nice thing to have seen uh, be done is uh, last week, all of the scrap metal is gone now. So that big mountain of brake discs and drums and all that is dwindled down to this and a couple of gates which will get picked up next week. As well, the uh, Ford van is gone and the 88 Buick is gone. I did save a few bits and pieces from the Buick. There's a hood and uh, the uh, tilt forward mechanism sitting there. But apart from that, there's not much left. Just a nice view, you know, obscured by a massive truck. There we go.